Somebody put a rifle to my head and tied me up and tied up my wife in front of the children at our flat in Barcelona. The children were going to school accompanied by the police. The police slept at our house for three or four months. That was the point where I said enough. Johan Cruyff uttered these words in April 2008 on Catalonia Radio and left the entire football world reeling in shock. How could a global football star in the prime of his career live through an experience the likes of which you think you'd see in thriller movies? The Dutchman was not only revealing a long-kept secret to the world, which is the reason why he missed the 1978 World Cup, but also shedding light upon decade-long rumors that haunted his career. Before going live on the radio show, Cruyff was the man who abandoned his teammates and the whole of Netherlands, or at best, a man under the influence of his wife. The Dutch fans were feeling abandoned, hurt, and furious, but Cruyff himself was going through a much, much worse experience. Welcome back to The Football Files. This is how a kidnapping attempt changed the course of football history. Act 1, The Walkout. Johan Cruyff was a football genius. The Dutchman changed the beautiful game, first as a player, then as a manager. Before he almost single-handedly built the Barcelona way that millions of fans know and love today, he was one of the most influential players of his time. In the 70s, Cruyff was in a league of his own. In the first World Cup he featured in, in 1974, he captained the Orania and helped his team reach the final with the three crucial goals he scored. Despite falling short against the Germans in the final, the resounding feeling Cruyff and company left their compatriots back home was hope. Every Dutch football fan knew that four years down the line, they would be there, with yet another chance to win the biggest trophy in football. But just before the World Cup, the feeling of hope was replaced with a feeling of anger, as their leader and their biggest source of hope had walked out on the team. Number 14 was not taking part, and the world would find out why only three decades later. And he had a very good reason. Act 2. The Trauma September 17, 1977, exactly 8 months and 15 days from the first kickoff of the 1978 World Cup. The Cruyff family is at their home in Barcelona. The children are in their room playing. Johan Cruyff and his wife, Danny Koster, are in a relaxed mood. The Barcelona and Netherlands star is watching a basketball game on the TV when the doorbell rings. Strange. They weren't expecting any guests, but Johan Cruyff gets up to answer all the same. While Cruyff is preparing himself for the possibility of it being a fan, running through scenarios in his head of ways to send him on his way without being rude, he'll soon be met with a very different scenario. Upon asking who's there, the only voice Cruyff hears from belongs to a man, saying that he has a delivery. Despite not waiting for any particular package, Cruyff unlocks the front door, and that will be a mistake that changes his life forever. The man outside barges in, but he's not alone. Six others accompany him. In fact, he doesn't even need brute force to establish dominance over his victims, as he already has Johan Cruyff at gunpoint. Cruyff and his wife try to stay calm and do their best to keep the situation between their abductors and themselves but the men have already heard the kids' voices coming from another room. Cruyff takes the initiative, begging the men to take whatever they want from them in exchange for his family's safety. By this time, the abductors have already taken the children out of their room and proceed to tie Cruyff to a chair in front of their kids. But while doing so, the armed man leaves his gun unattended. Without thinking even for a split second, Danny Coster makes her move. She takes the gun and starts running, shouting, and screaming in the neighborhood. The abductors know that it's too late now. They know the police will be there soon. So as fast as they can, they make their escape. But for the people they've left behind, escaping from this moment will be very, very difficult. As their lives flash before their eyes, Johan Cruyff and his wife were now living with the effects of PTSD. Something just as depressing as the situation that unfolded was the fact that for one reason or another, they wouldn't utter a word about it publicly for a very long time. Shortly after the incident, just a few hundred meters away from the residence, the police found a van with a mattress inside. Johan Cruyff was saved from an out-and-out -out abduction attempt. Back in the 1970s, kidnapping for ransom or political gain was a major threat, and it occurred in some of the richest countries in the world, from the US to Germany, Spain and Italy, and tragically, many of those stories ended in much more blood-curdling ways. Act 3. The Aftermath 
Johan Cruyff's decision to not play in the World Cup a few months later was never understood, and while he was silent about that fateful night in Barcelona, everyone else was keen to talk. The kindest of assumptions suggested that he was just under the influence of his wife. A book published by his former Barcelona teammate was the one who put forth the idea. He may have been right, but he was in no position to know why this was the case. In reality, his children were accompanied to school by the local police, and for a few months straight, members of the Barcelona police were actually sleeping at the Cruyff residence while number 14 was going to and from matches to his home, accompanied by bodyguards. If the initial reaction of the Dutch fans was heartbreak regarding his walkout, what transpired at the 1978 World Cup caused that initial heartbreak to turn into anger as the Oranja reached the final once again and once again fell short, this time against the hosts Argentina. A Dutch sports journalist, Martin Weifels, said, If he had played, we could have won the World Cup. He would have made us stronger. I think people were very disappointed at the time that he did not go. From the first time he stepped up onto the pitch to the very last game he managed, Johan Cruyff's ability to assert and express himself was unmatched. But for this particular incident, he was hesitant to do so. However, 30 years later on Catalonia Radio, he finally put all the rumors to rest. You should know that I had problems at the end of my career as a player, and I don't know if you know that someone put a rifle to my head and tied me up, and tied up my wife in front of the children at our flat in Barcelona. All these things change your point of view towards many things. Johan Cruyff never played in a World Cup game after the final he lost in 1974. And after two finals lost in a row, the Netherlands never came closer to lifting the famous golden trophy for many decades. Regardless of what happened on September 17th, 1977, Cruyff went on to amaze the world with his greatness, first on the pitch and, a couple of decades later, on the sidelines. And for that, the entire football world is grateful. Of course, Cruyff, Johan Cruyff helped us a lot to, to, to gain that. So In the academy from Barcelona, of course, you have to win and they show you that it's not good to lose games and you have to live with that condition, play every training session, friendly game, official game, you have to win, win, win. But the first team in that period was not a team like in 10 or 50, 20 years, win a lot, win a lot. It was a strong team, but not in terms of consistent win. And, but uh, the Dutch guy came and helped us, helped us. What does it mean to win? And again and again and again, never stop you hungry to, to win, always starving in that sense. And, and he helped us. He helped us a lot to, to change that mentality of that club. This marks the end of our latest episode of The Football Files. Do you think Cruyff's decision to keep the incident a secret was the right decision? Could the Netherlands have won the World Cup if he didn't walk out? Be sure to let us know. If you missed our previous episode on The Football Files, you can check it out right here. Be warned though, it's not for the faint of heart. We'll be back soon with another story that shook the entire football world. But until then, thanks for watching.